and today I'm going to talk to you about how to retrieve your data once you're done. So there's two ways to get to that data. The normal way you'd most likely do would be that when you log in, you're on this view scans page, and you can just go to when you recently scanned it. Presumably you might have just taken it off of the Inkia site, uh, and so it's one of these most recent ones, or you can click back here. And then you can just double, double click the the plate that you're trying to get the data of, and that would bring up this screen. But say you, uh, you know, you're just going back way later, you don't remember the exact date, whatever it may be, you can always at any time go over to archives um, and it would come up like this. And I always, to simplify my life, just type in our lab's name so I can get a scan that I had put on, or somebody from our lab had put on. Um, and so if it was a proliferation experiment, for example, I'm just going to pick one here at random. You could just pick that, you know, find your plate, pick that, and double click it here. So now you're just on a screen where you can look at different wells. You can look over here at the top left at different time points and, you know, click for a later time point and see, you know, did those cells grow or not grow, whatever you might be expecting, depending on what treatment. Uh, they're undergoing, etc. Uh, and here you can even see that that image one of two, because as I mentioned in the um, how to do scans, how to set up your scans video that we normally for proliferation plate do two images per well. So you can see that here. Uh, but what you really want, of course, is the actual confluence data. So if you hadn't run an analysis job when you first set the scan uh, to be running as it goes, here you could just go to this top right and click launch new analysis job. And because this is a proliferation plate, it's going to give you basic analyzer uh, analysis jobs to pick from. And you would just find the one that makes sense. You can see there's a lot on here because this is a shared device and so it has ones from a bunch of different labs. Uh, but this MCF7, uh, if it has ACR, those are my initials and I probably made that. Um, and then there's also one that's just called Ishikawa that is the proliferation mask. Sorry, this is slow. There it is, Ishikawa. Uh, mo most of my cells are normally endometrial cancer cells, so that's what I use. Um, you would pick your time, time range and pick your wells. You want to make sure that they're all highlighted here. Make sure they're all in yellow and that you're covering all the times that you want to get and then press launch. So this is assuming that a processing definition is already made for your type of cells. Uh, and of course, here, make sure that you title this analysis job something that makes sense. Um, so if you were using a different processing definition, you might want to state, you know, these were these cells from this date uh, with this processing definition in the name, something like that. And press launch. The thing is, it does take a few hours normally to run, which is why if we already have a processing definition, which is normally the case, I recommend setting that up to run when you originally set up the scan. So um, before I actually click on that, I want to point out a common mistake that people make is that before they forget to actually go down here to the bottom where it says analysis jobs and double click on that job, they just are on this screen because the screens do look fairly similar, and they go over to metrics and export this data. This data is not the data that you want. This is just about the machine itself. This is just QC metrics about the machine itself and is useless to you. So what you want to do is go down to this analysis jobs. You should have it here and just double click anywhere along that. And it should come up like this. And so you'll know you're in it because you'll have an analysis mask over here. So if you click on that confluence mask, because it's proliferation data, uh, it'll show up like this, and you can see that it's doing a pretty good job. You can even change the colors uh, if you wanted to. So I love lime green for everything. So say, whoa, that's pretty rough, though. Uh, but say you wanted to, it doesn't matter. Um, get it, oh gosh, that's really bad. I'm sorry to make you all look at that. So. Um, Say you did, though, want an individual picture of a specific well, you could go up here to, I think it's utilities, yeah, export single image, uh, and just follow along through that process. So, um, but what you really want is the confluence data, right? So 
you can click on any well and look down here and see that it's giving you the confluence percentage it's determining uh, based on that analysis job that you had run. So, and if you clicked on a different time point, you'd expect a difference in how many cells, and yep, it looks like there's more cells and there's a higher confluence, uh, which makes sense. So you can actually just glance down here for that sort of data, uh, but mostly what you're going to do is go over to this tab, Image Properties Metrics. You want to click on Metrics, and you want to make sure it's clicked on Phase, phase Object Confluence. That's the main thing um, you're you ever going to use for this. Uh, these ones don't end up being very useful, at least for most of our um, experiments. So, and then you can just click on Graph Slash Export. Again, it's already clicked on that, and now you just pick your time range. Normally, it's already selected. Normally, all your wells are already highlighted. Um, and so then the key thing is to go down here to Group and click None. That way, it's not giving you the average. Technically, you could click Columns or Rows, and it could give you averages. Uh, and when I've done it on All, it kind of comes out weird, too. So it's best to just click on None. That way, you're going to get each individual replicate piece of data and then you can graph them the way you want to um, and have the statistical power that you want. So, and at this point, you could go to data export. Um, and so it should come up like this. And you can kind of think about it how you want, uh, depending on how your plate's set up. I think it might be easiest to have it come out given you the data row by row a lot of times. If you set it up, um, you know, that maybe these ones are all the same, like A1 through 4 and then A5 through 8 or something, that kind of thing. Um, but if you did set it up differently, you could always pick it to do column by column. But you do want it like this. You don't want the show each scan as its own table. Um, and then here, it's just all scans in one file and, of course, just browse. Normally, I've got a flash drive attached to the computer and I would save it onto there. Um, how you like to save things and name things is totally up to you. Um, yeah, I don't normally include any of this. So, and then you would just press export. So the other kind of neat thing that it can do is this little, um, wow, that showed up faster than I expected. So down here you see uh, in the bottom right this microplate graph. You can click on that. Normally it can take some time to load but this just gives you a real quick glance at how your wells performed. So if you expected a lot of your wells to grow and you see this increase in confluence over time, that's a good sign. If you expected a bunch of wells to grow and most of them look like this, that's a pretty bad sign and you might want to think about where things might have gone wrong. Uh, it's already a quick hint that something didn't work well because your cells didn't increase in confluence much over time. So um, this can just be kind of nice uh, and informative for yourself, but not so much something that you would present. This data that you're going to get from here is what you would likely be presenting. So that is for a proliferation plate, and then as far as for a migration plate, so here is an example of a migration plate. It's a pretty similar process. Um, again, you're back into this page. If you need to run the analysis job because it hasn't been run yet. Again, go up to this top right, launch new analysis job. Um, and now it's automatically giving you scratch wound processing definitions. And you can find all the ones available here. So, um, and then again, choose a time range, highlight everybody that you want. Oops, you get it though. Name it something that makes sense and press launch. And it's gonna take probably a, a couple hours, uh, two to three hours estimate. So, and you can monitor the status of a running analysis job uh, by clicking on that. Oh, somebody's got one running right now, in fact. So, um, and again, don't make the mistake of clicking on metrics here. It's going to give you useless information. You want to make sure you go down here and click on the analysis job that is relevant, and that'll pop up. And now you know you're in because you have these masks. Now, for a wound scratch assay, you have a few different masks. You've got your normal confluence mask, uh, and so that's covering all these cells. So you should have plated it fairly confluent, and then you've scratched and removed all those middle uh, cells. And now you're going to be monitoring how long it takes 
uh, for these cells to invade back into that space, to migrate into that space. Uh, I shouldn't really say invade for this. So if you think about that, you want to know what your original scratch wound space is and then monitor basically how quickly it takes for that original space to fill up. So here you have an initial scratch wound mass and you can see that that is red, right? And that's going to stay the same no matter what time point you pick. But you could see that over time, uh, cells start to wait for it, invade that space quite a bit. Uh, that's so cool. Sorry, not invade, migrate into that space. Um, invade kind of uh, implicates uh, like a 3D sort of structure that it's having to move through a substance to get, get in. So the right terminology here would be to migrate into that space. So now you have your scratch wound mask and that does change over time. So you can see that the red is still red from where uh, the cells are, are migrating into the original scratch wound, but the yellowish green color here is indicating what is remaining as far as uh, scratch space. And that's how it's sort of slowly calculating this wound confluence. So right now, about 61% of the original scratch space has been refilled with uh, with cells. Cells have migrated into that much. This is where it can get kind of cool as far as getting images. You can actually export a movie and this will basically take the monitor those images over time and so you pick your example wells that you wanted to compare and you would do a movie for each um, and pick your time points as usual. You press continue and basically it would just do frames per second you want to make sure your movies are all on the same frames per second. Um, and it's just going to uh, sort of do a movie. And here you can kind of get an example down here in this uh, space here. Can I get it? Well, come back. There it goes. So see, and that gives you an idea of how much time that's taking. So that's just like a neat thing that you can do. I think it's super cool to be able to show that, especially if there is a real difference in uh, migratory rates of two cell types or whatever it may be that you're comparing. Uh, so, but I'm going to go ahead and cancel that, of course. So, and now for getting your actual data, that wound confluence percent. So you're wanting to monitor um, the percentage that the original wound is becoming confluent over time. So it's all going to start at zero, right? So you again, go over to metrics and you're going to want this relative wound density percent here. Um, you could also use wound confluence, but uh, we normally use this uh, relative wound density uh, since it's kind of relating back to that original scratch wound instead of taking into consideration debris cells that were already there. So um, that's kind of the best option. So again, you're gonna do graph slash export. Make sure it's clicked on relative wound density and here the process is again pretty much the same pick your time range, go to group, and make sure you click none. And then again, you can get, can get that microplate graph, uh, but you go to the data export. You can do it by rows or columns. There it goes. Uh, columns or rows, um, as I mentioned before, and put it on your flash drive or whatever uh, as needed, and then press export down here. And I believe that is everything you need to know about getting your data from a um, from either of these types of experiments.